Yeah, this your big partner Al Cam. You listen to Sweet Lation Radio with Kimmy Kim on Jerry West Live. Worldwide Jams, Vibes, and Radio on FavorNetwork.net. Follow them on blogtalkradio.com forward slash Elation Magazine or you can contact them at Elation Magazine at gmail.com. Elation Radio is known worldwide for lifting up people everywhere. So stay locked and we'll be right back after this news. How? Love the way you embrace me. Love the way you love me. Your love and kindness. It feels so good, God. So good. So good. You love me through my struggle and through the pain. Even through my ungratefulness, unconditional love you bring. There is no greater. There is no greater. There is no greater. so much and welcome to at midnight with Kimmy Kim and uh, I'm just grateful for having you on and I pray that what the spirit has given me will be a blessing for you so first let's go to the father in prayer father God thank you once again for your grace thank you for your mercy thank you father God for the word thank you for thanksgiving in our heart father God thank you for your son Jesus Christ who died for our sin father God please father forgive us for our shortcomings please Please, Father God, continue on creating in us a clean heart because, 
We need to keep it clean so we can renew our mind with the right spirit, Father God. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father, for just being a good daddy. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. Father God, thank you so much. I make this prayer in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He is just so good. Yes, like Theodore Chestnut said, feels so good to know God, you know? Woo! Hallelujah. It's just so good to know him. When you know him, you have a secure place. You have security. So, we have something really big for you today, and I uh, pray that you would be blessed with this message. And by all means, I love the Lord. I am a servant for the Lord. I love the word, and uh, I'm coming to you as, as a servant and as a sister in Christ. And uh, let's go to um, what midnight is all about, okay? Oh, yes, that midnight. <laughs> At midnight, it's all about uplifting souls and to give account of understanding that the, that the storm will come. When the trials are near, please don't fret because we have a Savior who has already won the battle. I trust the Lord. He is my rock and my keeper. Why be wary about the storms of life when we have the Lord who defeated death? Who can touch us? Who can harm us? Who can box with God? And now when you're faced with so many trials and tribulations all at one time, you know, ask yourself those questions. Because I am reminded that God would never place more on us than we can bear. He is just right there. He just wants He just wants us to give us our issues, our battles to him. Because he is the battle axe. He is the warrior who can box with God. So family, get to know God and much better, and uh, you will see that this life is so secure with him. By all means, you're still going to have problems, but I would have a, I'd rather have trials and situations with God instead of without God. <laughs> I cannot do anything without God because with God, all things are possible. Without God, all Nothing is possible because you are fighting a defeat, a defeated life when you are living without God. Yes, you are. But we have purpose. We have God on our side. So who can touch us? Let's cheer again. <laughs> I love cheering because you know what? We have to cheer for each other as we face our many midnights in life because we're going to face them. Jesus says we must bear our cross. When you follow him, you are carrying your cross, but you're going to carry a cross with him or without him anyway. So our foundational scripture will be coming from Psalms 119, verse 62. And it reads, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgment. Mm. When I focus on this passage, when you are going through your midnights, give God the praises because this <laughs> confuses the enemy. When you are happy and you have five cents in the bank, when you are happy and you're faced with bereavement, when you're happy and you're faced with sickness, when you are uh, uh, in a crisis and you are praising your way through this confuses the enemy because you know why? Because we know all things work together for the good to them who loves the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose because he has given us all the purpose as soon as we surrender our lifestyle over to him. He got us. <laughs> he is the best secured um, being. He will keep you. He will protect you. He will hide you from your enemies. I'm reminded about so many different passages in the Bible. He will keep you from your enemy. I'm reminded with the three Hebrew boys. I'm reminded with Daniel. I'm reminded with, you know, David. I'm reminded of so many wonderful women like Esther and Ruth. I mean, he can work it out for the good. So, let's trust him. And the scripture 
for the last will be read later. But um, when you are sold off of God and you are needing a church home, I have three recommendations. The first one is Sperling Temple Missionary Baptist Church with Pastor Jones. The second one is New Salem Missionary Baptist Church with Pastor Frank. And West End Mount Carmel for Gospel uh, Baptist Church with the overseer as Bishop White. And you will be blessed. I am telling you, those three churches will keep you, and they will challenge your growth because you must grow on a daily basis. God doesn't want us to stay in the same position. We should be, something different should be about us every year. By all means, we are still going to keep on pressing towards the high calling mark, which is, which is in Christ Jesus. But you should be able to take inventory of your life and say, wow. It was nothing but the grace of God. So, with that being said, we have a wonderful, a wonderful lesson from the Spirit. And it's called a thankful spirit. <sighs> when I think about a thankful spirit, I am reminded on when I go back into my life, my book of life, during my earlier times. On this earth, I can reflect on the things that I have done to myself that God has brought me out of. And it was me who put myself in those positions. But you know what? One thing I love about God, he doesn't throw rocks. He doesn't chastise you. I mean, don't get me wrong. He He may punish you. He may not punish you, punish you because that's what grace and mercy is about. But if you only knew my Story, I would be, oh my goodness, God. <laughs> he just opened up his arms with love. And he sounded like some of those church folks, you know, my, that stone you. And they have issues themselves. So, family, don't look at people. Look to God because that's where your help comes from. So, when I think of a thankful heart, a thankful spirit, a thankful lifestyle, I think about Jesus. When you focus on the lifestyle of Jesus Christ, and yes, he is real, you will have so much gratitude in your heart. You will have so much passion for people, compassion for people. You will have so much thanksgiving in your heart. You will be kind. You will be gentle. And that is really strength because you can be kind and gentle to people who are really mean and bitter towards you. You know why? Because you are covered by the blood of Jesus. He has given us the recipe for good living, and that is to believe in his Father, but you must go to Jesus Christ. So we have two wonderful scriptures for the lesson of a thankful spirit. The first one will be coming from Deuteronomy, verse 10, and it reads, When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. <laughs> if you have a peanut butter sandwich or you have a great steak, give God the praises for whatever he has given you. Because it's because of him we are able to have food, clothes, and shelter. It is not by your might. Because God can snap his finger and everything can change. So continue on with a thankful spirit. I love that particular passage. And my reference scripture will be coming from Psalms 100. And it reads, and this is a song of praise. <laughs> Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. <clears throat> Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord is God. The Lord, that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endure to all generations. And that is so true. We are still talking about this wonderful Jesus 2,000 years ago. (laughs) 
the Bible is the bestseller since 2,000 years ago. So, oh, my goodness, this wonderful passage. Psalms 100, meditate on that. I'm telling you, um, when you're just <laughs> talking about the Lord, the spirit of gratitude just, and thankfulness just comes up, and you're just praising the Lord because had it not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know what where I would be. And uh, just a reminder, Elation believes in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit operating in one. Yes, we do. I believe in the, Trin- in the Trinity. And Feel So Good came by Theodore Chestnut. You can find him on Facebook, LinkedIn. He, he's on Revenation. He has a wonderful single. Please support you know, I believe in independent artistry because I find the best talent there because you have people who are singing with a purpose and they're singing with so much gratitude in their heart. So we let's support each other because that is one of the, you know, ways of demonstrating love, okay? Now, let's go to a thankful spirit. Oh, my goodness. Ah. Thank you, Lord. Well, we are entering into the season of Thanksgiving and Jesus' birthday. And during this time of the season, I often reflect on how thankful I am to have a Heavenly Father who loves me so. Yes, Lord. A thankful spirit is what I strive for each, each day. God has just been so good to me. This is not a boastful period for me, but I'm, I am celebrating in the Lord. Family, the many midnights and the many ways God saw fit for me and my family to eat, the way God can take a penny and stretch it for the next pay period, <laughs> the way God can heal your body with a snap of a finger. He blessed the unqualified for his purpose. <laughs> I was not, my purpose was, well, my heart. Okay. In the beginning of my life, I wanted to be a CPA and have a CPA firm. Having a magazine and radio was not in my <laughs> plan. Furthermore, writing was very weak for me. Numbers were easy for me. <laughs> so he turned that around for the good. <laughs> so I can truly say that he blessed the unqualified. But guess what? When you step out on faith and God gives you a, something that just doesn't make sense, because when it's your purpose, it just doesn't make sense. It, it takes you out of your comfort zone. It's not something that you love to do. Well, I love doing it now, but at that time, I wasn't thinking about a magazine and radio. And I love, I mean, I have always loved um, serving others, but he has given me a purpose. And uh, I ask God each day to grow me. So trust me, it doesn't make sense when God gives you a purpose. You're saying to yourself, what? I'm looking at Noah when he asked Noah to build the ark. I'm asking, I'm looking at when they chose David. As to be the king, <laughs> he uses those that are that is like unqualified for his purpose. So he used the least of these. So pray to God for your purpose, <laughs> because God has kept me through the many trials that I had to endure. How can I not be thankful? Praise the Lord in the good and the bad times. It works. Praise the Lord when. The journey seems dark because praises confuses the enemy. God has given us a formula on defeating the enemy. It reads in James 4, 7, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. He is so mind-boggling. He's like, what can I do to get you? But when you are covered by the blood and you are submitting yourself to God, God is beating him with a hammer. <laughs> that is what I see when I, you know, when I visualize the scripture, uh, James 4, 7, submit yourself, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. He is beating the devil with a axe or something. Now, a thankful spirit lifestyle should reflect the believer's gratitude. God is just so good. Family, it says in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brother, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, 
And if there be any praise, think, ponder on these things. So, family, you got to be careful what you're feeding your spirit and your mind. I just can't look at everything on television. I'm sorry. I used to be the one in the early walk of life. I can listen to this and still be safe. No, that is the confusion of the enemy. You cannot feed yourself stuff and expect God's word to be, you know, growing in that. Because flesh and spirit wrestle. So the goodness of Jesus, the good word and the and the stuff from the world just cannot mix together. So be careful on what you're, you know, feeding your things. I still believe there are good things that you can enjoy, but just be careful because Whatever you think eventually is what you become. Keeping it real. Okay. A thankful lifestyle must be focused around the goodness of God. God is good. Thanksgiving is a reminder of his goodness. Yeah. When I just think on how good God has been to me, my soul is at peace. So family, no matter what you are facing, pray your way through. In Chronicles, chapter, first Chronicles, chapter verse 34, it reads, All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endured forever. If it wasn't for God's grace and mercy, where would I be? <laughs> when I just take a look on last year and how God has been good despite of my fall, family, this walk is a daily fight and we, we would not get there. By being right, the only person who can get us right is Jesus. I am so thankful that our Heavenly Father has given us Jesus so that we can live in heaven forever. We can live because Jesus lives for us, and we serve a living God. Jesus is not dead. Uh, Family, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. No, I am. I know that what he has done for me, Jesus is so good. I don't understand how good he is to me because I and wretched. <laughs> but how do believers develop, develop a, a thankful spirit? You must continue on cultivating your personal relationship with God. He must be first in your life because we serve a jealous God. It says that in the Bible. Here is the first test. What do you spend most of your time on? Second question. Does God's time truly matter in your life or do you place people, places, or things above God? Do you talk to God throughout the day, or do you make your own decisions? In other words, do you have a strong prayer life? Because that is so essential in the foundation of a thankful spirit. You know, I read some information online, and it reads, and you'll find the reference information on, you know, the page for um, this broadcast. It says a thankful spirit conserves the blessing of the fat. It goes back on God's dealing with it. It keeps a lot of the memory of his goodness. It delights in counting over the blessing it has received. Read Psalms 45. And that the bounce of gratitude can never get frozen up for the springs are daily flowing from a warm heart. And you can read that in Psalms 103, uh, verses 1 through 4. Yes. I mean, when you have a grateful heart, oh, my goodness, a, a thankful spirit, oh, my goodness. And a thankful spirit enables us to use up a right, the blessing of the present. It guards against sinful elation, against proud self-sufficiency. It keeps, it keeps us from forgetting once our blessing flow, where it comes from. By a sense of God's goodness, daily renewing itself, it makes the heart kind and sympathetic sensitive to the wants and woes of others. The spirit is soft and sweetened under adversity. It conduces to resignation and cheerfulness. It is thankful. It is praising. You know, a thankful spirit helps us pray for blessing in the future. Hence, the rule that prayer is to be accompanied with thanksgiving. You know, read Ephesians 5.20, Colossians 3.15, Philippians 4.6. Thanksgiving certain Faith gives encouragement. Enable us to pray with due submission to God's will. Prepare us for the reception of the blessings that we seek. Without thankfulness or for past mercy, it is impossible to pray all right for the future one. So 
that is a lot. So if you need to reapply uh, this wonderful broadcast that was given to me by the spirit of the topic of a thankful spirit, please do. Because I'm telling you, your lifestyle, your characteristics should be the fruit of the spirit. That is how you become grateful. A grateful spirit, a thankful spirit, should be the reflection of the fruit of the spirit. Yes. Because when you just take inventory on your life and just ponder, just reflect, meditate on how good God has been, because believers, all we do is survive. (laughs) We are survivors. And it's not a black and white thing. It's not anything. It's all about love versus hate. The enemy confuses us with race because we see things. But when you start looking at your spiritual supernatural vision, you see it's all about love, hate, flesh, spirit, light, darkness. It's deeper than race. And when you become I'm telling you, you can become a meat believer. I was a little milk baby. But as I became more and more into the Lord, and I, and I have not arrived, I am still a day-by-day process, but I can see that my trust is in the Lord. It's not in this world. It's not in the high powers of this world. This world cannot make me nor break me because I'm going to have a glorious body when I leave this earth. I'm going to have a body just like Jesus. And yes, you have people that say, oh, this Jesus is a slavery thing. This is what was made. This is what was brainstormed to us. But I dare you to test it for yourself. I dare you to believe believe him for yourself. And I have given you three great churches you can go to in the St. Louis area. I mean, you have to get busy for the Lord because you're going to, have those people on, people on, um, you know, on the defensive side telling you that this is not real because they have not tried God for themselves. They have not completely surrendered their lifestyle over to Him because you know, uh, when God comes back, when Jesus comes back for His church, He's not going to be concerned what you believe and you believe that you thought that He wasn't real because of what people were saying. But God <laughs> will not have any excuse because you see the sun, you see the moon, you see how the four seasons, you see the birds, they don't go starving. You see the flowers, you see the mountains, you see the sky. Man cannot make this. We just did not appear by through monkeys or by circumstances. God placed us here. So you will have no excuse for your soul. You're going to hell. I don't want, I don't want you to go there. I don't want my enemies to go there. It is a bad place. <laughs> so you must <laughs> surrender. You must have love in your heart, not hatred. Hate and love does not mix. It's like water and oil. It just doesn't mix. So in closing, a thankful heart pleases God and keeps believers focused on what truly matters in life. What matters family is your final destination. Do you know where you're going? This life is so brief. Please surrender over to God and watch how thankful your heart, your heart will become. He knows how to construct a new heart. Look at me. <laughs> because I am telling this, this is so true. A heart that yearns and desires him <laughs> is amazing. And I feel so secure in knowing that. God is my beginning and my ending. But we're, really, we don't have an ending because when you know who you are and who you are, we will live eternity on life. So I have a place where um, sin is banned and what a time it would be. Um, love will be the only way. So with that being said, my name is Kimmy Kim and I just love the word. It just keeps me. It sustains me. It protects me. It keeps me satisfied. It keeps me focused because this world is just temporarily. We, we will die in this body. We will, we will not you know, have this body for a very long time. God has given us this body 
for his purpose. So what is your purpose? Your purpose is to serve God. And then he will give you something that will glorify his kingdom. But you must surrender. Surrendering is beautiful. (laughs) It's beautiful. And yes, he does not expect you to be perfect. So if you've been on this role for just a year and you're still fighting your flesh, still stand because this too shall pass. I've been there, you know, lukewarm. Lukewarm cannot grow. Either you're in or you're out for the Lord. And uh, I just pray that you get in this, into this family, the body of Christ, very soon and get busy and go and fish for God because we are called to do the Great Commission, which is to go and spread the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is so good news. If you look at the world and the things of the world and the people of the world, it's really dying. We are dying every day. So with that being said, my name is Kimmy Kim, and uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, thank you once again for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for just being a good God, Father God. Thank you so much for just being real. Thank you for food, clothes, and shelter. Thank you for having life through you, Father God. Thank you for renewing my mind, giving me a a clean heart through Jesus Christ. Father God, I want to continue on dying myself and increase your ways, your precepts. I just know at the end of the day, what matters the most is knowing you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Touch those who don't know you. Touch those who are lost and confused. Touch those who are burdened down. Touch those who are broken. Because you are the I am God. We serve a living God. And Father, I thank you for your presence in my spirit. I thank you for your presence in my mind. I thank you for correcting me when I'm wrong. I thank you for chastising me. Because you said you chastise those who, who you love. And, Father, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for just all that you do, Father God. Thank you for for believing in a person like me. Thank you for giving me chances and chances after chances. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father God. And I want to make this prayer in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And uh, please visit elationmagazine.com. And we have a wonderful conference coming up at the Hilton Head Garden on Evans and Hanley. We're going to have Pastor Walker bring her book tour. She is a wonderful, powerful lady, anointed lady in the Lord. Please come support her. The ticket is only $20 just to help with the um, rental of the place. But we're just here to, you know, praise the Lord because it's a woman's, a woman's conference, women's conference, and Women matters to God. So come and be with us on this Saturday. You will not be disappointed. It's from one to three. And I'm telling you, this lady from Chicago is amazing. Okay, family? So with that being said, I wanted to get a shout out to Jerry Royce, live and worldwide on Positive Power 21. Miss B with Stone Talk 365, FlavorNetwork.net. And we have two more um <laughs> broadcast that we may be on. Um, please go on English and Magazine and read some wonderful articles. God has just been so good to us. And I just want to thank English and family for um, being there. <laughs> because I'm telling you, there have been times I felt like quitting, but God will not allow you to quit, especially when it's a purpose, you know, driven by him. So with that being said, I just want to let you know that God loves you. You are so special to him because guess why? You are royalty. <laughs> you, you have a place in God's kingdom. You are special to him. You are the apple of his eye. You matter to him. So if you have those people who are hating on you and they're turning their backs on you. It could just be God detoxing bad people from your lifestyle, you know, because he has a purpose for you. And then he's going to cleanse you with good people 
around you. But don't get me wrong. We still need to go and fellowship to those who don't know him. But when you have people around you who are like-minded, it gives you strength to go out and fish for some more people. Because we must must continue on fishing for those who don't know God. Because this gospel is not meant for us to keep to ourselves. It is meant to spread it throughout the nation, the world, even the internet. <laughs> because people don't go to church. Because we have a lot of, you know, Pharisees, those church folks, those self-righteous people who, you know, they just so holy that they just forget where they come from. But we must pray for them, okay? And with that being said, I just know that you are too blessed to be stressed because Jesus has given his best, and we have a place. So live life with victory. No matter what is going on in the world, God is still, is still in control. Be blessed with love. Oh, 